La last week, we read from Genesis chapter 1, where uh, verse 1 and 2 tells us that in the beginning the earth was formless, void, darkness was all over, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the surface of the deep. And uh, the last verse, 31, that tells us that uh, God looked uh, on the sixth day, he looked at what he had created, and it was good. And I was saying that Genesis chapter 1 is a story of hope. I was saying that it does not matter how you start in life. What matters is how you end. And I was also saying, make your end to count. Amen. So briefly, let's go to John chapter 17. Then we will be going home shortly. John chapter 17. Are we there? John 17. Let's read from verse 20. It says, Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Verse 21. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 22, and the glory which thou, thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Verse 23, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that though thou hast sent me, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Then we go to verse 26. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Amen. So I'll be very quick. Now, John chapter 17, from the first verse to the last verse, records the prayer Jesus made. When you study John 17, the prayer is threefold. Jesus prays for himself. Number two, Jesus prays for the disciples. Number three, Jesus prays for believers. That's what I'm going to focus on, the last part, where Jesus prays for people that are going to believe the, the, the message the disciples will be spreading, and that is us. We are the product of the work they have done uh, uh, before. So, when Jesus prays, he prays for a number of things, but I'm only going to focus on one. So, he prays that uh, we may be one, um, and we may be where he is. But the element that fascinates me and humbles me is when Jesus prays for love. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says we know that uh, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that whosoever that believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. But here, in John 17, Jesus prays this prayer that humbles me, a prayer for me that shows the type of a person he was and he is. He says, Father, my prayer is that you love them with the love you love me with. I want you to think about this part. So, we know that God loved Jesus. I mean, it's him, himself. Because Jesus is God the Son. So, God the Son is praying to God the Father. And saying, Father, 
I am praying for people who are going to believe in me. My prayer is that the love you have for me, love them with the same love. I have a this, this, this verse may now conclude the whole uh, Sundays for the rest of the year. You don't need more verses. You don't need many, many more verses. This verse alone. So, as you sit here, I want you to understand that God loves you and he does not love you less than how he loved Jesus. No. God loves you the same way he loved Jesus. Not less. He doesn't love you less than Jesus. Sometimes, I, I know it may be very tempting that we, we, we consider ourselves less loved compared to Jesus. But yeah, Jesus prays. Jesus himself prays and says, Father, uh, the love that you have for me, I ask you to love them with the same love. So powerful and so humbling. To sit here and know that God loves you not less than Jesus. And, 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 and we, we, we do know that, that, that because God loved Jesus, God had a plan and a purpose for Jesus. So because God loves you today with the same love that he loved Jesus, then the same way he treated Jesus, he is treating you that way. Not less. How did he treat Jesus? When Jesus prayed, he answered. How did God treat Jesus? He revealed his will to Jesus. God is revealing his will to you because he loves you the same way he loved Jesus. What did, how did God treat Jesus because of his love for him? When he died on the cross, he resurrected him because he loved him. Because he loved him. And this is one of the things that, that the enemy attacks first. This is one of the things that Satan makes us to doubt. How many of us doubt that God loves us? Because of the things that are happening in our lives or not happening, we sometimes or we often doubt if God loves us. And particularly when we are going through pain, it is easy to question if God loves you. It is easy to question if God loves you when things around your life are collapsing. It's easy to even ask, God, are you there? But Jesus Christ, Jesus has prayed for you. When he prayed in John 17, he had you and me in mind. And he prayed for us. He prayed for us. He prayed not only that we be one, but he prayed that God loves us with the same love that he has been loving him with. So I came as we prepared to go home just to say briefly to you that you are not less loved. You are not less loved. No matter what is happening in your life, God loves you the same way he loved Jesus. He does. He does. I do know that sometimes we measure the love of God for us based on what is happening or not happening in our lives. But God's love goes much deeper than that. Because if indeed the love of God is based on what is happening in our lives or not happening, then Jesus would have doubted the love of God when he was on the cross. Because he would have said, if you really loved me, why am I on the cross? So the love of God cannot be measured by us going through struggles of life or the challenges of life. We cannot use that to measure the love of God. The love of God cannot be measured by when we get employment and, and, and we get married and, and things go right in our lives. That, that's not the right measure or scale to measure the love of God. The love of God is measured by who he is in our lives. So Jesus... 
was beaten. He was insulted. He was mocked. He was laughed at. And if really he had to look at life and look at the love of God for him versus what he's going through, he would have really reached a conclusion that God does not love him. But God loved him. God loved him. And I'm here to tell you today that God loves you the same way he loves Jesus, no matter what is happening or not happening in your life. Things may be difficult or things may be going easy. That is not affecting the love of God for you. I still believe that even people that will go to hell, they'll go to hell with the love of God. Because there's no scripture otherwise that tells us that God will ever hate his creation. That's why he wants all of us to repent. Because of the love he has for us. Not less love. Not less love. You take Jesus, you put him here, you put yourself here. The way you believe God loved Jesus, that's how God loves you today. Because Jesus, who received the love, has prayed to the Father and said, Father, the love you have for me, I'm praying for those who are going to believe in me, that love them with the same love. Can we stand? One of the things that we know is an indication of the love of God besides him sending Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross is the Bible says God corrects those whom he loves. When God loves you, he shows it by amongst many other things, discipline. When God says to you, stop this. When God says to you, get serious with me. When God says, it's time for you to live for me. He's not because he hates you. That's how he shows his love for you. When God says, danger there. When God says, watch out for these friends. When God says, watch out for this company. When God says, watch out for this church. When God says, watch out for this one, two, three, four. It's not because he's trying to keep things away from you because he doesn't love you. In fact, it's the opposite of it. He's telling you to watch over certain things and certain people in certain places because of his love for you. The Bible says God corrects those who he loves. Including not answering some of the prayers we have been asked to pray because he loves us. Some of the prayers he will not be able to answer because he knows that once he has answered, he has already seen the end in the beginning. He says concerning the Israelites, these ones, I know them. If I take them through a short road from Egypt to the promised land, I know them. They will turn against me. However, I'm going to take them through the long road because of the condition of their hearts. They might have complained to the Israelites to say, why did God take us through the wrong road? It's because he knows us. And because he knows us, then his love allows him to do certain things concerning our lives that we may not like. But his love is superior than our requests and needs. His love, the Bible says, it's an unfailing love. It's an unfailing love. It's an unfailing love. So before we go home, because we've come to the end, I want to pray with you. Because I've told you today, that God doesn't love you less than how he loved Jesus. He loves you. Some of you may have come to church, you are discouraged. You are even asking yourself if there's God. You are asking yourself that you have been believing God, you have been praying for certain things that are not happening in your life. You are asking if he's really there. He's really there. His love for you may be what is causing him not to answer certain prayers for our lives because he knows better than we do he knows tomorrow we only know today and we, what you're asking for may impact your tomorrow and because he sees your tomorrow and knows your tomorrow he's protecting you from tomorrow because of his love for you but the question that I've got for you is that knowing very well that God loves you with the same love that he loved Jesus my question to you this afternoon is that do you love him? 
Jesus asked Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times to a point that Peter gets frustrated to say, but you know me, Lord. You know that I love you. But the question is even relevant for us today, that do you love me? Do you love me or do you love the things I do for you? Do you love me or do you love what you get out of me? Do you love me or do or, or you love other things that relate to me? But the question is, do you love me? Because I love you. That's why I sent my son Jesus Christ to die for you on the cross. Because I love you. That's why I've been disciplining you. Because I love you. So my question to you today is, do you love him back? Do you love him back? And this is the question I have for you. And I want to pray with you today. If you came to this church today, yes, you may possibly be going to other churches or going to a church. You possibly are reading the Bible or studying the Bible. You're possibly a prayerful person. But you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You have never given your life to Jesus. Your name is not written in the book of life. If you were to die today, you know that you wouldn't make it to heaven. If Jesus was to come today, you know that you will not make it to heaven. Because the name of a church and church going and reading the Bible and prayer will never save anyone. It is only Jesus that saves. It is only Jesus that saves. It is only when we believe in him, not when we believe in the prayer, not when we believe in the Bible, not when we believe in the church, but when we believe in him as a person, it's when we get saved. So I want to invite you today before you go home that today can be a day with your memory. A day, a today can be a day which you can write in your diary to say, on this day in Bethal, in his presence ministries, I made a decision that changed the rest of my life. I gave my life to Jesus. I began to live a new life. I made this decision in 1998 and I never looked back. You can be part of those people that have made this decision to give their lives to Jesus. I'm not asking you to join this church. I'm not asking you if you go to church or not. I'm not asking you if you pray or not. I'm not asking you if you read the Bible or not. I'm not even asking you if you play gospel music in your car or in your house or in your phone or not. I'm asking you, do you love Jesus? Do you love God back enough to give your life to Him? And if you are here to say, Murut, pray with me. I want to give my love to Jesus. I want to live a new life. I want to change my life. I'm repenting today. I want to be a new person. I want my name to be written in the book of life. Lift up your hand wherever you are. I will not ask you to come to the front. I'm just going to pray with you wherever you are. You say, Pastor Tabo, pray with me. I've been going to church. I've been praying. I've been reading the Bible. But I don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. I don't know him. My name is not written in the book of life. I know deep down in my heart that I'm not living the life that pleases him. But from today, I want to make a decision to give my life to him. You can all close your eyes. And I'm, you know, you may, you may make a decision to say, look, I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to church. I grew up in church. I was born in church. It's, it's fine with me. It's fine with me. It's fine with me. But, but I, wanna, I want you to take it further to say, is your name written in the book of life? Is your name written in the book of life? Or not mok fundi by bail or not not mok cons, but have you ever made a decision to give your life to Jesus? I see a hand that is lifted up. You can also join that person whose hand is lifted up and say, Pastor, pray with me today. I want to give my love to God. I want to give my love to Jesus. I want to be born again. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of only going to church, but without having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'm making a decision to be born again. You can also lift up your hand and let me pray with you before we go home. Let me pray with the hand that is lifted up. Father, I thank you for the hand that is lifted up. It's not lifted up to me, but it's lifted up to you. In the mighty, glorious name of Jesus, I pray that, Father, you can see the heart from where the hand has been lifted up. And I pray that, holy and precious Father, you will write a name in the book of life. I pray that, Father, today marks the new beginning of her life. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon her, Lord, and that her name will be written in the book of life. May you forgive all her sins, Lord, and cleanse her from any form of unrighteousness, Lord. In the mighty, glorious name of Jesus, I pray that the eyes, Lord, of, of, of her heart, Lord, may be enlightened for, for understanding the decision that she's taking today, that behold, the new has come and the old is gone. 
In the mighty, glorious name of Jesus Christ, we pray everyone say amen.